And Gus Henningberg is in Newark with tonight's Closer Look. Gus? During the early 1970s, the state established a special loan fund to assist struggling urban businessmen. Called the Urban Loan Authority or the ULA, the fund made more than $4 million in loans before it became part of the state's Economic Development Authority. When the ULA went out of business in 1978, more than 82% of the loans it had awarded were uncollected. Now, New Jersey Monthly Magazine has uncovered some shocking facts about the Urban Loan Authority. In an article entitled, Who Let the Mob Into the State Treasury?, the December issue of the magazine raises serious questions about the way the Urban Loan Authority was run. Working in cooperation with New Jersey Monthly, producer Bill Einreinhofer and I have prepared a special Closer Look report. It was an area like Main Street in Patterson that the Urban Loan Authority was created to help, neighborhoods where small mom and pop stores were trying to survive. But not all of the Loan Authority's money went to struggling urban businesses. According to New Jersey Monthly Magazine, the Urban Loan Authority gave $100,000 to this firm, Elton Fashions, a Passaic garment manufacturer. The firm was incorporated by a convicted bookmaker and run by the son of convicted teamster racketeer Ernie Palmieri and the grandson of Peter Lodi Pete LaPlaca, believed to be the reigning organized crime boss of northern New Jersey. Monarch Fashions, another Passaic firm, received $135,000 from the Urban Loan Authority. Monarch is owned by Frank Palmieri, a reputed soldier in the Genovese crime family and the brother of convicted racketeer Ernie Palmieri. Because of its location in Bloomfield, an area the state characterized as blighted and decaying, the Urban Loan Authority gave Best Fern Incorporated a $165,000 loan. George Francanero, one of Brendan Byrne's former law partners, and the man later implicated in a massive mafia-controlled bank swindle, was one of the firm's principals. One week after receiving the state loan, Francanero's company moved to this shopping mall in suburban Passaic County, abandoning its urban location. The firm went bankrupt in less than 18 months. William Garner, who is now Patterson's Director of Human Resources, was a director of the Urban Loan Authority in its early years. It was Garner who pushed for the loan to George Francanero's Best Fern Company, and Garner later accepted a consulting job with that firm. Lawrence Kramer is mayor of Patterson. During the administration of Governor William Cahill, Kramer ran the State Department of Community Affairs, and that gave him overall responsibility for the Urban Loan Authority. The request of the board uh, that we were on, and that did not exist when we got there, was to institute the procedure for what is known as a four-way check. We would ask through our attorney general, and by the way, no meeting ever took place without an attorney general's representative in the room advising the board. Uh, it was our uh, request that we institute the procedure for uh, these checks on the principles involved in any company coming for a loan. But some people did get through the net. We made the mistake. Uh, it, it, the buck cannot be passed on a, on a loan like that one in Fairlawn. We were there. We made the decisions. Yes, we had advice. Yes, we had a staff that did the homework. Uh, but the point is, it still was our responsibility. He got through the net. Patricia Sheehan, now the executive director of the Hackensack Meadowlands Development Commission, succeeded Kramer as Commissioner of Community Affairs when Brendan Byrne took office in 1974. She appointed George Woody to run the authority, which then made loans to at least five firms, either owned by or connected with organized crime figures. Uh, whether there are things that could or should have been done differently, that's probably true not only of ULA but of lots of other things as well. Uh, the fact of the matter is they weren't done differently. We uh, made our best effort at the time and as I say if there are, are mob connections or somebody's related to somebody else who who ultimately or subsequently was indicted or uh, associated with a known gangster that's not a reason that you would be permitted to to not deal with that person in a telephone interview this afternoon William Garner the former director of the Urban Loan Authority denied any wrongdoing Mr. Garner contends that he never pushed for any particular loan to be awarded and that the integrity of the ULA was never compromised. The New Jersey Monthly article on the Urban Loan Authority was written by two investigative reporters. 
Ed Barnes and his partner Taylor Walsh were formerly staff writers at the Patterson News. Mr. Barnes is now a freelance writer and is with us today. Ed, you spent six months working on this story. How did you do it? Why did you do it? Um, we came across the story uh, during the, uh, the bank scandal that started it and found that the bank scandal hadn't been really followed up enough. There was so many loose ends, and this was just one of the loose ends that's still hanging around from when the mob took over four banks in the state, at least four. Well, do you, did you make the assumption, or do you now make the assumption, that these loans, which we will talk about in a moment, were made because of incompetence, bureaucracy problems, or was there something much more sinister involved in that? Much more significant. I think there's no question that there was incompetence in the agency. But if you look at who was getting the loans, it's the same core group that was involved in each of those, in the bank, certainly in the Bank of Bloomfield and Chatham, at the same time. Now, one of the things that you allege in the article, Ed, is that security checks apparently were not made on loan applicants. Um, how do you, on what do you base that conclusion? Um, we ran through some how the procedure worked, and uh, what happened was they'd asked for the security checks, but in such a way that the, state, the uh, Attorney General's office wouldn't know what to do with it. Now, when and you say they, you mean the Urban Loan Authority Urban would ask the checks be made? Right. And they were not made? Well, they sent be sent over to the Attorney General, and the Attorney General wouldn't know what to do with them, and they just send them back. In some cases, they were made, but generally they weren't. Well, let's talk about the process for a moment. I would assume an applicant comes to the Urban Loan Authority seeking a loan. Mm -hmm. The staff of the Urban Loan Authority does all the processing. Now, who formally voted and made the decision to give or not give a loan? The, the board of the Urban Loan Authority consisted of the uh, Commissioner of Banking, uh, the uh, Commissioner of Community Affairs, and the Treasurer, State Treasurer. So they, in fact, had to vote on every loan made by the Urban Loan Authority? Everyone. Now, significantly, um, a good deal of time they didn't show up. Um, the ULA was new, it was a minority program, and it only had $4 million. Um, the impression I got wasn't worth their time. They left it, in one case, they left it to someone who couldn't even vote because it was so low in the hierarchy. Um, they really didn't appear to care about the, the agency at all. Well, why do you believe, Ed, that, that the mob connections which you allege in the article sort of fed themselves into the Urban Loan Authority? Did they get, believe this is a patsy that we can get state money from? I'm, I really have a lot of questions on that myself. I, the fact that they're there is significant. Uh, what that means is something that a, a, uh, the state, somebody is going to have to answer. And the Urban Loan Authority has recently been transferred to the Economic Development Authority. Do you attach any significance to that? I think it was killed. Uh, the ULA was grant, empowered to give uh, 250000 up to $250,000 in loans. Um, the EDA has it now, and in 1978, it only gave one loan that would fit that category, and in 79, only one loan. So There's no place for urban. It's or, basically dead at this point. Thanks very much for being with us, Ed Barnes. A more detailed history of the Urban Loan Authority can be found in the December issue of New Jersey Monthly Magazine, which will be on the newsstands later this week.